All right, yo, what is good? We are in week five. You are here at Cine 230 Remix Cultures. It is the real Dr. Dre, aka DJ Food Stamp, aka Andre, coming to you live and direct. Well, direct from Goat Spirit Homestead. Just chilling in the barn on the tractor, kind of bored and boring. You know, but we're just going to do it here because I'm being lazy right now. So, you know, we're going to take you, take you through this thing called Trademark. So, uh, last week we, we had left off pre-exam talking about the duck and uh, intellectual property rights at the University of Oregon, and particularly Trademark. So, I hope today we'll give you a little bit more, um, a little bit more context for some of that discussion and put things in a little bit more perspective um, for, for you. Um, and so we'll roll through some examples. We'll talk about what trademark is, what it protects, some of the nuances of it, some non-conventional trademarks and stuff like that. And then in our next class, we're gonna talk about appropriating trademarks, uh, using other people's trademarks to make commentary or critique or anything like that. So I'm um, glad to have you with me, you know, just chilling. Hope you all are good. You know, you can always hit me up if you got any questions or concerns or comments, hit me up on the on the celly, um, or you know, always feel free to come through Monday at four o'clock for the the happy hour. You know, it's literally just kind of chilling. A few people have been coming through and you know, just chatting. So it's cool to get to know people, especially in a hundred student class where where I really don't get to know a lot of people. So it's just weird that like. You know we're in this situation and I'm getting to chat with people and learn learn a little bit more about y'all than the normal so anyways um, do come through but uh, yeah we're gonna talk about trademarks so um, you should have watched some videos and read a little bit about what trademark is and um, this is you know trademark is you know trademarks are let's just say things we see all of the time and um, you know Really, it constitutes everything from logos, catchphrases, it can be something like a color, a song, it can be a smell, it can be a shape. Anything that we uh, can hear, taste, touch, smell, see, that when we look at it, it's a signifier of the provider of goods and services. That's, that's all it is. It could be a character name, a movie name or a franchise or anything, anything like that. Um, so, you know, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we'll go through some basic examples. So if you look, we got the first trademark ever. And this is like, you know, trivia night stuff. You know, you don't really need to know this for the test per se, although it could be a bonus question here. But the first um, ever trademark uh, known to humankind is uh, the Bass Brewing, Bass Brewing Beer, uh, which is uh, an English uh, brew. Okay, the first trademark in the United States is Samson Brand Ropes, and the first character name to be franchised or trademarked and therefore tra uh, franchised is Tarzan. Um, so that's just, you know, a little, a little bit um, to leave you on. That's some like trivia stuff. But you know, here's the deal, yo. We live in a world where people own words and catchphrases and things and own their names. So, for instance, when uh, Lord Overlord Trumpito says, you're fired, and he points, you know, that was something that he trademarked uh, when he was on television. Or if you're in a drunken stupor and falling down and say, that's hot, uh, that is a trademark of Paris Hilton, um, although it may, you may not have to be drunk and falling down, but you know, she registered for a trademark on that. So you associate um, those words, those catchphrases with those uh, celebrities, so to speak. Um, so y'all probably don't know this, but I grew up in the Northeast, about an hour north of Boston. Now you know I am a Boston sports fan. This is normally when the class boos at me because I have a bunch, usually a bunch of Lakers fans. Uh, in the place, but uh, whatever, y'all can't say nothing to me here. Uh, <laughs> the greatest sports franchise in basketball history ever. Anyways, Boston Celtics. Um, I am also, though, a recovering Patriots fan, and I say that in the sense of, 
you know, they're really hard to root for. But I grew up rooting for them when they sucked. Anyways, the season where they were, uh, where they went 18 and one, they went into the Super Bowl. They were 18 and 0. A couple weeks before the Super Bowl, an employee of at the Patriots tried to file, and the Patriots organization, uh, you know, on behalf of you know, basically this employee, uh, the owner, aka the owner, um, filed for a trademark on 19 and 0. 19 and 0, the perfect season and the perfect season, um, and. Uh, when they went to register their trademark, uh, they got denied. And the reason why is that the trademark was actually owned by um, someone who worked for the Denver, Denver Broncos, who in the late 80s, I mean late 90s, were, I don't know, 12-0 and 0 or 13-0. and 0. And this employee of the Denver Broncos uh, filed for a trademark on 19-0 on and 0 and all that stuff. And um, they ended up losing the next game. So the Patriots obviously ended up losing the next game on the helmet catch. You know, I've, I've probably finally recovered from that, maybe. Um, and, uh, you know, they obviously didn't get to 19-0. They didn't have a perfect season. The New York, uh, the New York Post joked that it, it, it registered for a trademark on 18-1, which became the truth. However, in 2017, the Patriots were able to um, register the trademark on that um, now, will they ever use it? <laughs> Highly unlikely. You have to use a trademark to, to keep it. So you can register it, but you have to use it. Um, you don't have to register it at all, but you have to use it. Okay? Um, you know, just while we're on some sports stuff, uh, the word three-peat, which is a portmanteau of repeat three times, um, uh, is owned by Riles and Company. This is Pat Riley. Pat Riley uh, was a player and coach for the Lakers, Knicks. Um, I can't remember who else he, he coached. And, uh, but he, he's the general manager, I believe, of the Miami Heat. Anyways, when he was a coach of the Lakers, Byron Scott you know, brought up 3 Pete. Now, it didn't happen then, but like, that's what By Byron Scott came up with for a name for this. And Pat Riley's like, oh shit, that's dope. And he registered for a trademark on it. So when the Chicago Bulls, if y'all are checking this Jordan documentary, it's dope. He is the GOAT, all you bronze stands, just so you know bronze stands that he is the GOAT, Jordan. Um, MJ. Uh, anyways, uh, when the Bulls three-peated in 93 and then again in 1998 after the last dance, um, you know, when they wanted to put three-peat on t-shirts, hats, any, anything, they had the license at from Pat Riley. Uh, the Yankees did it in 2000. The Lakers did it in 2002. It's, uh, but anyways, when they, when they use that as an organization or the NBA or anybody who wants to use three-peat has to uh, license the right to be able to use it from Pat Riley and company. Uh, Back in the mid-2000s when the cheating-ass USC Trojans were, were cheating and winning national titles, um, some students there tried to file for a trademark on 3 Pete P-E-T-E, -E, after Pete Carroll, who was the coach. Um, they ended up getting a cease and desist order from who? Pat Riley, right? Because when you, you know, they were, they were doing a little play on his trademarked uh, word. Uh, uh, which, you know, you don't want to do. That's one of the things we'll talk about when we talk about trademark is a lot of young people, a lot of people think like, yo, if, if like people start using my brand name as a regular name to describe things or whatever, that's good. It's actually the worst thing ever. Um, it's good that like people recognize your good or service so much or think your brand name's dope enough to, to apply it to a, a verb, use it as a verb or a noun, but that's actually not what you want because if that starts to happen, like when searching on the internet uh, for information is no longer searching on the internet for information but Googling, you, 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 you could lose your trademark for Google. That's, that's kind of part of it. So um, that's real important. You always want to be as distinct as possible, and I'll talk much, much more about this. But yo, you know, people own things like Charlie Sheen owns the winning. Dr. Dre, the fake Dr. Dre, owns a trademark on Dr. Dre. So, like, if I was ever to do, like, Dr. Dre's beat making or Dr. Dre's 
DJ school. You know, I'd probably get sued by Andre Young, although we both have the name Andre, but his ass don't have a terminal degree or an MFA or none, nothing like that, no law degree, nothing like that, you know? So we both have rights to the name Dre, but you know, it is what it is. I'm salty about it, hence the real Dr. Dre. Uh, yo, I don't know how these Jersey fools keep getting back on TV and who cares. That was the worst thing in television ever was like, let's just do reality shows on people from New Jersey. I don't know what the fascination was with it, but all those Jersey Shore fools tried to file for trademarks on their name. They all got denied. The situation, found out there was like a men's clothing store uh, called The Situation. Uh, Jay Wow, she got, she got denied. The only one who I believe got a trademark on their name is Snooky, because what the fuck is a Snooky? I don't think a Snooky exists um, in the world. Uh, so, um, yeah, she was able to, I believe, get her, her trademark on that name. A very valuable trademark, uh, by the way. Um, in, uh, when Jay-Z and Beyonce, King and Queen, had uh, Blue Ivy before she was born, they tried to file for a trademark on uh, Blue Ivy's name. Number one, to prevent people from exploiting the name Blue Ivy, uh, but also so that they could exploit the name Blue Ivy and make, like, you know, children's clothing lines and diaper lines and, you know, any, anything like that. They actually were not able to register for the name on Blue Ivy because someone in Massachusetts, I believe, had already filed for the name and had been using it in the marketplace. I believe, though, they did file years later for some, some sort of Blue Ivy something name. They, did, they were able to get something um, related to Blue Ivy, but they couldn't just uh, trademark Blue Ivy itself. Um, the important thing to note too about trademark, and we'll get more into this, is it has to deal a lot with product market. So you can own a word or a color in a specific industry or, or product market, whether it's clothing or educational services or, or you know, you know, uh, various types of you know products have their own distinct section or category and there's I believe like 70 categories and you have to register in every category in which you want to or market so to speak in which you want to exploit your name of trade so if you find like you go to register your name and someone already has it in that particular market you you can't have it but like if it's a non-famous name like Blue Ivy maybe isn't like that famous of a trademark right um, you could have Blue Ivy pesticide or, or something like that, you know. But if you did Blue Ivy, um, you know, sneakers or something, you know, and it's too close to the uh, trademark that's held on Blue Ivy for clothing lines or whatever, uh, you know, you get you get you get in trouble. Um, oh, crrr! oh, crrr! Uh, is a Cardi B trademark, although Cardi B actually did not um, invent the word, so to speak. Uh, she, she just popularized it, you know, I, and I think that's very important is that uh, O'Krrrr was like, she didn't come up with it, but she's the one who made it like a thing. And that's really important um, because like Byron Scott didn't make, you know, 3P the thing. Pat Riley took it and then it became, became a thing and then Pat Riley owned it, you know. Um, but a lot of times, the way you use words and if you're famous and you make them popular, you'll, you'll get trademarks on them. Like LeBron James got denied on his trademark for Taco Tuesday, you know, which whatever, people have been using Taco Tuesday for a long time, you know, so he got snubbed on that. 